The carnage that some people want to deny happened to the Philippines, and I'm here to knock that one out of the ballpark, is a direct result of Fukushima. And the reason I say that are many, and there are many well-known peer-reviewed academic global warming models that say if the ocean gets warmer, then storms get more powerful. We can take drastic action now to ensure that we prevent a future where super typhoons become a way of life. So believe me, when the Times is saying lethal threat from Fukushima's highly radioactive water flown into the Pacific is real. We already have a study based upon the first two weeks and how that will impact the ocean. The simulation which was run by a German marine research institute shows the entire Pacific water is being polluted by radioactive water in just six years. That model didn't include a leaked TEPCO report of 120 billion Beckwell's disintegrations a second every second for thousands of years of plutonium. I mean millions, I mean billions of years and 7.6 trillion Beckwell's of uh, disintegrations per second, every second, every day, endless energy, like a big battery of Neptunian that was released in the first 100 hours. And a new UN report showing 95% of the Fukushima discharges are transported in the Pacific. And that contaminant is heading all the way to North America, meaning the ocean is filling up and it's heating up because it's putting out all this energy taken into account reactor one melted in five hours, five hours, and that there's a minute 400 tons going into the ocean every day. A new emergency in Japan, the Fukushima nuclear plant is leaking 300 tons of highly radioactive water into the Pacific Ocean per day. New Japan's nuclear watch... Another blow came from a new study showing the impact strengths of just cesium-137. Another shows the west coast to be as high as four percent four percent it's worse than a big battery not including uranium plutonium the strontium wasn't in any of the models just uh cesium-137 and as you dive in you find the whole pacific ocean likely to have cesium levels five to ten times higher than that peak of the nuclear bomb test alone that the LA Times says 60 billion becquels of cesium-137 and strontium-90 are being discharged daily into the Pacific and that there's reports of trillions of becquels of plutonium-239 released from Fukushima, 23,000 times higher than previously announced. I made a video full of this called Fukushima Butter Numbers if you need more. But what happened to the Philippines is a direct result of the radiation being absorbed into those super cyclones. That was the size of the country, and they hit like an F4 tornado. This storm is sandy size in width. This is the entire country of the Philippines. The scale of this disaster is unprecedented. On our 120 kilometer to get across from the western to the eastern side of Leyte Island, all we could see was kilometer after kilometer of utter devastation. It's hit multiple islands with full super typhoon force, 200 mile per hour wind. We've never seen one this strong. Just give us an idea of these worst affected places. Destroy homes flattened for miles, water seemingly wiped away everything in its path. Haiyan crossed over 44 provinces, and as you mentioned earlier... It's over a 300-kilometer path that took right through the Visayan regions. So why we think about Tacloban being hit, I mean, I can also say I have teams over in Caron, the western side, and they saw a similar level of damage. It's a journey into the tapestry of personal tragedies of millions of Filipinos. We know there's almost 15 million people that have been affected by this storm. Village after village has been decimated. The degrees of destruction vary. Some villages still have water, but nearly every building's been wrecked. Roldan's a fisherman, or rather he was, given his boat now sits a couple of kilometers inland. There's a lot of water under this storm. There's going to be storm surge 50, maybe 60 feet. All the people along the eastern shores of the Philippines will be moving. The super typhoon destroying 80% of everything in its path. Dealing with the aftermath must be as tough as surviving the storm itself. 
more pictures of Friday's typhoon are now emerging. In places, the winds reached almost 200 miles an hour. That makes it one of the most powerful storms ever recorded on land. It flattened flimsy homes as well as sturdier buildings. Many people would have been killed by collapsing walls or flying debris. What to do with the dead is one problem, but how to help the living is more urgent. No food, no power, no shelter. Several million people desperately in need of help. I can't think. I don't know what to do. Right now, all we can do is survive the day, but I don't know what will happen tomorrow or the day after that, or if we can continue to survive. Up to four million Filipinos have been left homeless. If you have storms like this becoming more and more frequent, we might as well vacate and look for a much better place on this earth, because certainly there won't be any future to look forward to.